Oh, it's that ever so wonderful time of the week. Time for the WCTV Super 6. Dom, some shakeups this week because it was a pretty interesting Friday night. A very telling Friday night for teams within our Super 6. Some proving why they should be there. Others knocked out other newcomers. I'm, f I'm excited to see uh, what we got here, right? Yeah, now. South Georgia fans, you're going to want to buckle up. It's going to be an interesting one. But let's start in the Big Ben, shall we? And let's start with a new team to the Super 6, the North Florida Christian Eagles. Undefeated is Mr. Hill's squad. Uh, Coach has them rolling, and uh, Mr. J.P. Pickles can sling it. Oh, they got a higher-powered offense, Ryan. 117 to six, they're outscoring opponents. They got Taylor County this week. Listen, if you keep winning, you're going to find your way in our Super Six. Monroe, that's a message to you. You're going to get back in, but the, the NFC Christian Eagles did knock out Monroe from this week's Super Six. Yeah, North Florida Christian stays at six, which means that St. John Paul II moves to five. All the Panthers have been doing is winning, and Coach Hill's squad. Shows no signs of slowing down on that. I just love this team. Tremaine Hughes Jr. is fun to watch at quarterback. 39-0 winners over McClay. Uh, man, Ed Hill's got him clicking. You said it, Ryan. As, uh, JP2, number five. All right, so we had a couple Cowboy fans upset about the number three ranking last week. <laughs> They're not going to be thrilled about the number four ranking. Listen, uh, it's tough to drop somebody when you lose to Fitzgerald, who's such a good program right. out of Georgia. But they did lose, so we do have to penalize the boys and listen, just a little bit. I mean, it was only an eight-point loss. I'm still very bullish on the Cowboys. They're going to be just fine, and that's why they're still on our Super 6. I mean, we love the boys. I really hate that that game was on Saturday because yes. that would have been a fun, fun Friday night game. But if they're at number four, that means the McCullough War Eagles must be at number three. Listen, it was tough to take Monroe out of the top six, mm. but... It's what? also tough to not move Wakulla up after such a dominating performance. I mean, what can you say? I got a chance to see this team up close and personal. They have talent all over the field. What a well-oiled machine. Explosive, explosive offense. What a performance. A big matchup against Bluntstown this week. Could be our game of the week, but man, does Wakulla look good, Ryan. All right, before we reveal our next one, well, actually, let's go ahead and reveal that next one. <laughs> it was the Seminoles of Florida High at number two. Shutout victory over Taylor County last Thursday, but... We know who number one still is. It's the Lincoln Trojans. And yeah, it, it's just hard to flip flop at this point because Lincoln's looked so sharp. But listen, that's an undefeated, decent Taylor County squad. We think that Florida High shut out at home. But yeah, how about Lincoln's Gads Lincoln's just rolling. How about Gadsden County getting Lincoln than Florida High? Their schedule Woo! has been brutal, but Lincoln outscoring opponents 182 to six. That's really good, right? I mean, I don't care what you say. The Lincoln Trojans and Florida High Seminoles, they just keep on winning. I mean, they're going to play the last game the of the regular season. The last game of the regular season. How, How about awesome that? that? But they're, I mean, I just don't foresee any movement in our top two of our Super 6 in Florida. These two teams are fun, fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. But you never know. That's why they play the games. That's right. To South Georgia, where things get a little more interesting. A little dicey. Coming in at number six. How about the Brooks County Trojans? Hmm. Um, listen, Brooks, we know they're plenty talented. We know they're well coached. Uh, Dom, your thoughts? Uh, listen, so they moved to six, which means Bainbridge knocked out of our Super Six, right? The Bearcats have two losses. You'll see what uh, number five, why that kind of the shakeup, what the, by nature of the shakeup, Brooks to six, you see right there as I'm bubbling over my words. The Cook Hornets, goodness gracious, beat Brooks. They only got one loss, and you know we only have one loss. Bainbridge has two. It was a tough decision, but we like Cook. Yeah, especially after a dominating performance over three and O Clinch. Clinch was actually a team that I had on my eye. Clinch County, the Panthers, yes. to put into the Super Six. But then after Cook's performance, how do you say no? So technically an area fringer, but still great for the Hornets to be here at number five. At number four, no change for the Lounge Vikings. Uh, Zach Grage and company. Still not completely sure what to make of the Vikings yet, but we also know that they are immensely talented. Yeah, so they lost that week one matchup, came back with two wins in the bye week. So still haven't seen yet, just like you said, right? I'm not sure what we think about Louds, but they deserve to be in our Super Six. Bit of a different four, five, six there. Could have happened last week. We did it this week, but we like the new teams, the new blood here in our Super Six in Georgia. So a little bit of a shakeup at number three, mm -hmm. Thomas County Central uh -huh. and Jacket fans Please save your emails. This was a really <laughs> tough decision. We didn't like doing this to you because the jackets are great. They're they are so good. They're so good. But when you shut out Warner Robins on the road, like our new number two team did, you just can't deny them. The Valdosta Wildcats, Coach Felton has a special squad in winners. We so. asked ourselves, is Valdosta for real? A 25-0 win over second ranked in 5A Warner Robins. Uh, that answers that question. They are for real. Thomas County Central. 
just move the ball at will against Childs. The Jackets are so good. I just want people to understand that. So much fun to watch, but how do you not move Valdosta at the two after the performance they had on Friday? Yeah, I, I almost even said that maybe we should put a tie there, but I know there is no change at number one and there shouldn't be. No. Boy, Valdosta and Coughlin County. I Woo! cannot wait for those two are you to get kidding? it on later in the season. Packers and Wildcats, two of the oldest high school football programs in existence <laughs> on top of our Super 6. Listen, you just can't say no to them anymore. I mean, the Jack Luttrell fake punt, I know I wasn't here on Friday, but that was, that almost, was disgusting. I almost started singing Rocky Top on TV. I mean, listen, 70 yards to the house, the talent, it's the talent with Colquitt County. Lee County was in the game, the Packers pulled away. Look at, the, look at those 16s. I mean, where can you go wrong? Yeah, I mean, honestly, seriously, that is blue blood after blue blood after blue blood in South Georgia, and plus plenty of notable names in the Big Bend as well. Dom, this is just setting up for another excellent football Friday night. Yeah, we got Bainbridge and Brooks County could be our game of the week. Bluntstown and Wakulla could be our game of the week. Super Six, I love it. I Re how, <laughs> really easy <laughs> way for the Tigers or the Bearcats to mm -hmm. make their way back into the rankings on either side of the border. But hey, an excellent Super Six ahead of what's going to be an excellent football Friday night.